hello everybody, uh, Steve uh, G3 ZPS here. Uh, and today we've got quite an unusual uh, transceiver here in the workshop. It's an ALDA, that's A-L-D-A, -A. sounds a bit like Aldi, uh, but it's the ALDA uh, 103, uh, made in the US uh, in the late 70s, or solid state, three band uh, HF transceiver. Uh, this came to me uh, through the sad uh, silent key uh, sale of a, of a friend of mine and uh, it was found uh, in the back of his workshop. Um, I, as I've got quite a large collection of uh, vintage ham radio gear and uh, I do quite a lot of research on some of the old makes, I had heard about this radio and seen them in the US on their websites but I had never expected uh, to find one in the UK or even locally and then be able to uh, get hold of it. It's an extremely small and lightweight 100 plus watt transceiver with absolutely no frills, no AM, no CW filter, just three bands, so no complicated band switching. Uh, fairly innovative for its time. Now the story goes uh, with, this, uh, with this radio that the owner of the ALD company uh, decided, uh, oh, by the way, the company apparently made RF deck, which I guess is modules and printed circuit boards, RF components for other US companies. Uh, but the owner, Radio Ham, decided that he wanted a small, lightweight bit of ham radio gear for his yacht. Now, the interesting thing about this radio, and any of you uh, folks watching who are familiar with 70s US solid state ham radio kit may notice that there appears to be more than a passing resemblance um, here to the uh, Atlas 210. Uh, another a similar radio, uh, lightweight, small, limited features, sideband only, quite high power, in some cases over 100 watts PEP output. There is a, um, a myth, maybe a myth, maybe some truth in the US that some retired Swan employees uh, designed this radio for the ALD company, which is why it looks so similar uh, to the Swan. It's got a bit of a sort of kit build quality about it. Uh, built like a little jewel, a little watch. It's, it's a lovely little radio, but quite quirky, quite a good receiver but with some uh, strange uh, strange features. Uh, one of the ones that divides opinion, certainly in the reviews I've made in the, met, I read in the US, is the, is the dial drive. Uh, the two slow motion drives before the VFO cap, and we'll come back to that in a second. The one nearest the front of the radio, which drives the dial here, is uh, a two-speed arrangement. So, so it comes to a stop, and then you can go really, really quickly. And then you've got a two-speed, a slow-speed uh, area in the middle here, fine-tune. And then when you get to the end of that, you're back to a fast-tuning arrangement again. Now, in practice, you'd think this would be absolutely great, but in reality, it's um, it's a bit of a nightmare. On the VFO cap, there is a further little cog reduction drive, pretty typical of um, uh, the VFOs at the time, and that cog reduction drive has got an anti-backlash gear with two uh, two sets of cogs that mesh and are held together by a little spring so they, um, there's no backlash. Unfortunately, and not only on this radio but others I've read, the spring either wears or becomes not springy anymore and rather than uh, limiting the backlash uh, you end up with a dead spot where how you turn the, the VFO drive, the drive to the capacitor is turning, but the little reduction gear on the cap is not turning properly, so you end up with a dead spot, which is a bit of a nightmare. Uh, the readouts are also very, very limited on 80 metres, or on 20 metres or 40 metres, it's only um, every 10 kilohertz. It's every 5 on 80 metres, but reading it would be... Uh, would be rather difficult. Uh, my friend has, has done a mod to this radio because of the backlash of the tuning dial. He's wired the RIT on the whole time, so it's now like a fine tune control. 
Uh, the other mod that my friend did to this, and I didn't really know this until I, I got hold of the radio, uh, is that when he got it uh, many years ago, probably over 10 years ago, uh, apparently the MRF 454 output transistors were dead. And he scratched his head for a while and decided that he would put different devices in place of the 454s. And I've had a look in the PA and they're VHF 1515 watt devices, much smaller than the uh, original transistors. And he must have cut down the drive to the PA as well. I haven't found that, all those mods yet. The end result simply is that this is now a 10 or 12 watt PEP radio. So near QRP and nothing like the 100 plus watts that it would have originally been able to run. Uh, I am looking around and some friends have uh, got some transistors which may slot into the uh, PA compartment and with some mods put me back to um, uh, 100 watts, 50 to 100 watts again. But we'll have to see about that. Uh, this is light, very, very light. When you compare it with some of the Yaesus, early Yaesus and the icons at the time, which had a lot more features, it must be said, they're way heavier than this little lightweight radio. So let's have a quick listen. It's on 80 metres. So it's running into a Drake four line speaker at the moment. It has got a speaker built in this radio, and I've actually got it running off a battery. Um, I could run it off a battery as it's only 12 watts out. Uh, very, very simple. So there you go, that's the Alder 103. Uh, leave any comments in the video if you've seen one. Certainly if you're in Europe, if you've seen one and used one, I'd be very interested to know. Thanks a lot and I'll see you soon. 73 is all.